Okay. Okay, so if I see any unwanted comments in the chat session, I warn you, I uh, will remove you from the session. So because there are others who are waiting outside, I want fully focused session. And if any unwanted talk, I will make sure that you are out of the room, please. Okay, now, this problem is solved in the morning. I'm waiting for you to ask for any specific questions that you did not understand, then I will explain. Any others? If that is okay, I'm going to solve. This one, which is similar, but it is different and it is slightly more complex than that one, but it covers most of the essential principles that you need to know. So I'm going to solve this now. Okay, so now the equation for the curve is given, which is y equal to 16 minus 1 over 625x squared. The car passes point A with a speed of 25 meter per second, that is the starting velocity, after which its speed is defined by v equal to that function. So the velocity is changing as a function of displacement. Determine the magnitude of the car's acceleration when it reaches point B, where S equal to 51.5 meters and X equal to 50 meters. So at point B, the displacement S is given as 51.5. You can straight away substitute that in that equation and you can get what is the velocity at that point. So if you know the velocity, that is the tangential velocity, you can calculate what is the normal acceleration because normal acceleration is tangential velocity squared divided by the radius of curvature. So we need to get the radius of curvature at P. So what is rho B equal to? That is one thing that we need to calculate. And second thing is, uh, what is uh, the tangential velocity? The velocity, uh, uh, I mean tangential acceleration, the velocity is varying as a function of displacement. We have solved problems like this. If someone gives you velocity as a function of displacement, you can convert that into acceleration as a function of displacement. And then into that, you substitute the same S and get the corresponding acceleration that will become the tangential component of acceleration. So to get the car's acceleration at B, he is asking you to calculate what is AB. AP is made up of two components. So if you draw the tangential T axis and the normal N axis there, the unit vector along the tangential axis is ut crown, and the unit vector along this is un crown, and the acceleration b vector is equal to the tangential component of the acceleration at b times 
u t plus the normal component of acceleration there times u normal unit vector. So what is a t and what is a n? We know a t will be a function of uh, displacement because he gave you velocity as a function of uh, 0 0.15 years. So we can convert this into acceleration as a function of displacement. And because he gave you s equal to 51.5 meters, you can substitute that into these two equations and get what is AD and what is VT. That's fine. Then use that VT to calculate the normal component of acceleration as V squared over rho, where rho is the rho at B, the radius of uh, curvature at B. The, that is the plan of action. All these things should cross your brain before you can solve a problem like this. So once you are sorted out, now I want, I'm going to get what is rho at uh, B. For that, I told you a method. So y is equal to 16 minus 1 over 625 x squared. y dash dy over dx is. So we can simplify this as, uh, um, OK, is minus 1 over 625 times 2x. So this can be simplified as y dash is equal to minus 0.032x. I simplified 1 over 625. And then y double dash is equal to minus 0.032 because that x is gone with the derivative. We know rho is the radius of curvature of any curve at any point is equal to 1 plus y dash square to the power 3 over 2 divided by modulus of y double dash. Substitute the known quantities here. Rho is equal to 1 plus y dash whole square, which is 0 0.0032. 0.0032 x whole square to the power 3 over 2 divided by y double dash modulus. Modulus means we kick out the sign, so minus is gone. 0 0.032 is y double dash. When you simplify this, this equation will be rho is equal to 1 minus. I'm writing it in just simplest form, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 4. If you want to write in more uh, elegant forms, welcome. Up to you. 3 over 2 divided by 0 0.032. So at, what is it? Two over six twenty five is how much? This is point zero zero three two, sir. That's what I have written. At uh, at what? At uh, x equal to fifty meters. Where did I get this from? He told in the problem when s equal to fifty one point five, we are at point B corresponding x is 50 meters. So for that, rho is equal to 1 minus 0 0.0001024 times 50 square divided by 0 0.0032. Zero, zero, three, two. Is it? 
zero zero three two x is it yep is it all fine now so from this our row is equal to three hundred and twenty point five meters so that is uh, rho p the radius of curvature at point p with that known we can now go to establishing other quantities so let me put a separator here so that we don't get confused v is equal to 25 minus 0 0.15 as so a d s is equal to v d v therefore a is equal to v times d v over t s Therefore, that is equal to 25 minus 0 0.15 yes times minus 0 0.15. So from this, acceleration is equal to minus. 3.75 plus 0 0.0225 yes that is the acceleration as a, a function of displacement at s is equal to 51.5 meters where i am getting this that's where we are solving the problem everything is centered around at point b for which the displacement is given acceleration is equal to minus 3.75 plus 0 0.0225 times 51.5 <clears throat> from this acceleration the tangential acceleration we can call it as minus 2.5913 meter per second square that is the tangential acceleration the velocity tangential also we can calculate 25 minus 0 0.15 times 51.5 so from this the velocity tangential is equal to 17. Point two seven five meter per second then the normal component of acceleration is equal to vt squared over rho vt is 17.275 squared divided by rho we just found out 320.5 so from that 0 0.9311 meter per second squared the total acceleration therefore is equal to under root the tangential component which is this one 2.5913 squared plus the normal component which is this one 0 0.9311 squared so from this the acceleration total is equal to 2.5 sorry 754 meter per second square okay that is the solution what i'm going to do is i'm just going to record an explanation of this solution 
and I will upload that online so that uh, it will benefit those who are not present, uh, unfortunately, in the session today. Okay, we start recording. Okay, in this problem, the car is passing point A. Let me first uh, uh, delete some of these unwanted uh, things and uh, redo it. So the car passes point A at a speed of 25 meter per second. So that is the point starting point. And uh, its speed is defined by V equal to um, 25 minus 0 0.15 yes meter per second. So the velocity tangential is varying as a function of displacement in this problem. So determine the magnitude of the car's acceleration when it reaches point B where S is equal to 51.5 meters. So that means at point B, the distance traveled is 51.5 meters, and the point B corresponds to X equal to 50 meters. At point B, what is going to happen is uh, you have uh, a normal component of velocity, uh, sorry, a normal component of acceleration, and a tangential component of acceleration together with the tangential velocity. So we call that axis as T and that axis as normal. And uh, your tangential velocity and acceleration will be in that direction. The normal component of acceleration will be in this direction. We need to calculate both tangential acceleration and normal acceleration. For the velocity, because velocity is given as a function of displacement, we can use a d s equal to v d v and get acceleration as a function of displacement too. And into those two equations, if we substitute s equal to 51.5, because that is the point at which you are asked to calculate all these things, you can get both the tangential acceleration and tangential velocity. Once you know the tangential velocity, the normal component of acceleration is v squared over rho, where rho is the radius of curvature of this curve. And at point B, what is the radius of curvature? To calculate that, I use the method that we developed in the class. That is, take the equation, draw the, uh, get the y, y dash, the first derivative with respect to x, y dash is equal to this, then differentiate it again, y double dash, and then substitute that in the equation for rho, which is 1 plus y dash squared to the power 3 over 2, divided by modulus of y double dash. After substituting, sorry, after substituting and simplifying, that is the equation for rho, and uh, x equal to 50 meters, which is what is given for us, when it is substituted, I got rho at point B at 320.5 meters. And after that, I'm beginning with the velocity, which is the velocity given as a function of displacement. I used ADS equal to VDV, reshuffled, and got the acceleration as a function of displacement. Into these two equations, I substituted as equal to 51.5 meters, and I obtained what is the tangential acceleration and what is the tangential velocity. Once I know the tangential velocity, I calculated the normal acceleration as V tangential squared divided by rho, substituted the quantities and that is the tangential component sorry normal component of acceleration once you know those two components the total acceleration is under root tangential component square plus normal component square which is the final answer which is as given here any question for me in this is that okay Yeah, the row equation will be given in uh, the exam. You don't need to keep it in your brain. The equation for that row, which is uh, this equation, it will be given. If I give this problem, I'll give you that equation. So any other question? is the time 735 so we are running out of time
I'm giving you a minute to think about it and ask me if you have any questions. You can type questions if any in uh, the chat session. Okay. Um, yep, Roy is Roby. Yep. Um, okay. So many students are asking me about um, 1286. I think Michael Agno was uh, pestering for that for so much of time. So I think I'll just give you a quick, uh, um, quick uh, review of the problem so that uh, it will help you okay let me do it here Twelve eighty-six is uh, don't have the problem here i'm just reading it when a rocket 12 86 when a rocket reaches an altitude of 40 meters it begins to travel along the parabolic path y minus 40 square equal to 40 whole square equal to 160x. So y minus 40 whole square is equal to 160x. That is the path where the coordinates are measured in meters. If the component of velocity in the vertical direction is constant, vy the vertical velocity component is constant, 180 meter per second. Determine the magnitudes of the rocket's velocity and acceleration when it reaches an altitude of 180 meters. So that means y is equal to 80 meters. What is the, the rocket's velocity? And what is the acceleration? Okay. Now, I will do like this. Vy is given y minus 40 whole square equal to 160x. You divide both sides with respect to time. So, 
on the left side it will be 2 times y minus 40 times you need to write dy over dt because we are not differentiating the time function with time but we are differentiating y with respect to time so we write it as uh, dfy over dy times dy over dt that to dy over dt is here my equal to also we are differentiating with respect to time here so first d over dx which is 160 times dx over dt so 2 times y minus 40 <clears throat> dy over dt is nothing but the velocity in the y direction is equal to 160 times dx over dt is nothing but the velocity in the x direction it's uh, y equal to 80. This is 2 times 80 minus 40 times Vy is uh, 180 meter per second. 180 is equal to 160 times Vx. So from that, Vx is calculated as uh, 90 meter per second all right once you know vx and vy the total velocity at that altitude is root x component square plus the y component which is 180 square therefore the velocity is equal to 201 meter per second the acceleration in the y direction is dvy over dt, but that is constant is equal to zero. And acceleration in the x direction, if you differentiate the equation one once again, so then you will get an expression for acceleration in the x direction. And I will leave that uh, for you, and I will give you the final answer, ax is equal to 405 meter per second square. So therefore, the total acceleration a is under root ax squared plus ay squared. ay is 0, so ax is 405 meter per second square. That is it. So I just did not do one part. I'll leave that with you. Okay. Now I have uh, around uh, 15 minutes time left. So what do you want me to do? So do I answer specific questions? Twelve one thirty. Okay. Twelve one twenty nine. I have here. I solved it uh, this afternoon. Should I do twelve one twenty nine? Twelve one thirty is uh, based on the same thing because the same picture. And some of the questions in the textbook there are questions that include friction as well. Will we be doing these in the test or exam? No. Yes, please, 12, 129. I doubt it because we haven't done friction this semester. See, friction has already been done. So if I wanted, I can ask about friction. 
but I'm not going to ask you about friction tomorrow. So um, keep that aside for now. But remember, so the knowledge gained from statics needs to be used where and uh, when necessary in dynamics too. But tomorrow, no friction. How many weeks are included? So man, what question is this? Everything that I taught in the first four weeks, which means up to the point what I did this morning. Your differentiate set, yep. So differentiate that uh, equation, once again, you will get there. I don't want to do everything, I'm leaving it for you. Okay. Let me quickly put uh, this uh, uh, problem together. It's a lengthy problem. I will not solve it completely, but I will show you what you can do. When the car reaches point A, it has a speed of 25 meters per second. It's similar to the previous problem. If the brakes are applied, its the speed is reduced by acceleration t. So the tangential acceleration is given as a function of time. That's the only difference here, okay? Yes, online tutorials, not online tutorials. Everything, all tutorials that I did so far, the online tutorial and the classwork problems, everything. So this problem, I'm running out of time. I cannot do the whole of it. So what you need to do is uh, the distance traveled by this from B to C is that angle is 30 degrees because he gave this angle as 30 degrees. So from that, BC angle divided by the arc, which is radius, is equal to, uh, I mean, arc angle equal to arc divided by radius. So the angle here is 30 times, you need to write it in radians, pi over 180. From that, the length BC is equal to 130.8997 meters. Now, tangential acceleration in this problem is given as minus 1 over 4 t to the power half. So, you use a equal to dv over dt, and from there, integral dv equal to integral a dt, substitute these quantities, and simplify, you will get velocity as a function of time which will reduce to one minus uh, minus one over six t to the power three over two plus uh, 25. I'll leave that uh, with you to do. And uh, velocity is equal to ds over dt and ds equal to v dt. If you integrate it once again, you will get displacement as a function of time, which is minus one over 15 t to the power five over two plus 25t. So integrate this, you get this. Integrate this, you get this. That's what it is. We have been doing that a number of times. Now at C, the displacement total is equal to the 200 meters from A to B, plus the extra from B to C, which we just calculated, 130.8997. Eight nine nine seven. So the total displacement is three thirty point eight nine nine seven meters. Now you need to use this in this equation to calculate what is the time. So that will give you this horrible expression, which is three thirty point eight nine nine seven is equal to minus one over fifteen t to the power. 5 over 2 plus 25 t. Don't lose, don't get a heart attack. You don't need to solve this equation uh, from first principles or analytics. You just uh, use trial and error. When you get very complex equations and you don't know what to do, 
the easiest method is substitute different values and see if you can match the left and the right. For example, if I take t equal to 10, I just randomly took, I got s is equal to 228.918, which is not equal to 330, so it is smaller. I need to keep increasing t. So t equal to 15, I will get s equal to 316.9052. t equal to 16, I'm getting, I'm going slower now because I'm getting closer to the actual value. 331.7333 meters. So it's very close. So I take t equal to 15.9. So s is equal to 330.295. There are only decimal variations between this and this. So I will take t equal to 15.9 seconds as the final answer. So at that time, the tangential velocity, if you substitute in that equation, minus one over six times 15.95 to the power three over two plus 25, it will give you 14.4332 meter per second. And the tangential acceleration will be minus one over four times 15.9 to the power one over two. That is the given equation, which is minus 0. 9969 meter per second squared. Then normal acceleration is equal to Vt squared over rho, which is equal to 14.4332 square. Rho is constant uh, radius, which is given there by 250, which is equal to 0 0.8333 meter per second squared. So therefore, the total acceleration A is equal to root the 0 0.9969 squared plus 0 0.8333 squared. So from this, the acceleration is equal to 1.2993 meter per second squared. Done. How do you know they have same row? Sir, is the test question mostly covered in the, uh, the I saw answer that. How do you know they have same row? Who have same row? So will we get full marks for that? Which, which, what is that? B and C, Mr. Charlotte Kitchen. B and C, yeah, he, yep, he, it is just, uh, did he say anything when the car reaches point B, blah, 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 it's fine. If the bracer is speed resistance, determine the magnitude of acceleration of the car just before it reaches point C. See, he didn't give you any equation for that part of the car, for this part of the car. And uh, if you don't, if, if he didn't give, and he only mentioned R equal to that much. So there is only one way that it can be solved, that it is changing with a constant radius from B to C, it is an arc of the circle. That is it. You don't worry about the marks. If you can solve this problem like this, I'll give you A plus. So the T values, oh yeah, there is a slight variation in T value, don't worry. It's absolutely no problem because in trial and error solutions like this, uh, no two persons will get at the same answer. So. You will get full marks if that attempted, if that is attempted in that right way, you will get full marks. Any other question? Charlotte Chen. We still have five minutes, so if you have any questions that are burning, or is there a different way to solve instead of guess or check? If you can find a solution to that equation, you tell us uh, um, tomorrow after the exam, sir, we will be very happy.
12-130. What is the answer? Yes, I can give the answer to 12-130. The answers. Um, by the way, the equations when you develop A will be 0 0.001 yes minus 1 and V you will be developing as a function of displacement. Um, here uh, acceleration is given as a function of displacement. So from this you need to develop velocity as a function of displacement and um, solve the problem the same way as you did earlier. The only difference is this part. And the final answer is the velocity at the C tangentially is 8.526 meter per second. And acceleration at C, the total acceleration is 0 0.730 meter per second square. Yep, that is done. When v, when you, Mr. Vig Z Wang, twelve eighty six, two times y minus forty, divided by three. Could you please show the how to get it? So this is a differentiating uh, a function in y with respect to time. So I told that in the class, if a function f um, is f y, if you are differentiating with the time. Say if uh, y is a function of, uh, I mean, say d f y d over d t of f y is equal to d over d y of f y times d y over d t. You cannot directly differentiate. That is it. Any other question? I'm going to upload and email this part of the solutions also right now. And I will also email the formula sheet, what you will be seeing tomorrow. And remember in that formula sheet, only the first few are covered so far. All right. Tomorrow, 10 to 11 in the class is the test one. Although I will see you all there. So I will shortly put this whole thing.